Kyle Milbert, I'm here with Kyan Steins, and this is Inside the Mind of an Athlete. Kyan Steins, <laughs> one, he's looking huge, by the way. You got, I mean, I know camera adds 10 pounds. <sighs> no camera adds 30 of pure muscle. He grew three inches since he graduated. <laughs> Taylor Stallman's livid that he didn't sign the venue, but we'll get to that. That's cap. No cap. And we're going to get this thing going with... Uh, when you were younger, growing up, what sports were you really into? So I started off with, I can't remember if it was like, well, obviously soccer. Every yeah, little every kid, kid used, yeah. I mean, and then I was like, screw this. This is way too boring. And then I went to football. I was one of those just cut, don't get up field kind of guys. Yeah. So it was flag. I was trying to make a move every time. <laughs> and then eventually I transitioned into baseball and I was playing with the older kids and I did that for until seventh grade year and that's when I fully quit for volleyball. Okay. So growing up, enjoying the game of baseball, now baseball is the same season as volleyball. How how do you make that switch, and was it hard? Okay, so um, baseball, I'll get into the later years of my baseball career. Um, I was playing, I was probably 14 playing against 16-year-olds, so I was just getting pretty much whooped. Yeah. Couldn't hit, couldn't feel, was just weak. And so I think I really learned how to, like, understand failure and because baseball you're not going to succeed at all right. really and then so I made the seventh grade team our team was like really good we were supposed to win I can't remember if we did or I don't think we did and then eighth grade year a couple of new guys started like really hitting stride yeah and I had tried out for seventh grade volleyball and liked it I mean it's fun as Punish sport in the game. Yeah. And um so yeah, I I made the seventh grade team my seventh grade year and then going into eighth grade I got cut from baseball. I was devastated. And then my parents were like, Hey, like you don't seem like you're out there having fun anymore and like I really wasn't. And so they were they had to talk to me and they were like I we think you should like pursue this volleyball thing of yours, and smart people. Yeah, and so I was like, I remember that night. I was like crying. I was upset because baseball was all I'd known, and those people I'd grown up with, and it was just a weird transition. And so that's when I tried out for fear, made fear, and that's when I fully like was like I'm done with baseball. Nice. Yeah. I know, because coming out here, where when I grew up, uh, volleyball was a fall sport, yeah, not a spring sport. Uh -huh. So that's why. And I went to a small school, so I was, it was between soccer or volleyball, and yeah. it's like the same thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm done with soccer. I'm done running. I'm done everything that that sport has to offer for me personally. Yeah. So I just went the volleyball route, and like you said, it's the funnest sport to play mm -hmm. because there's always something going on. There's yeah. always action. There's never. There's never a pause in the game unless there's a timeout. Exactly. So it's definitely a, my favorite sport to play and coach, be on the sideline and watch you guys go crazy. But um, it's also it's good to hear and it's good to tell people as well how to kind of quit a sport you love yeah, but only to pursue another sport. So yeah. you're, not, you're, you're kind of saying goodbye, but you're mm -hmm. also saying hello to something greater. Yeah, so. I mean – Volleyball for me it was like, like I'm always doing something. I mean, I'm mean, like everyone out there plays a huge role on the court, right? And it's just like you're always doing something. Not like baseball where you're sitting in the outfield and you don't get a ball to hit the old game, right? Right. And yeah, so that's yeah. So I was my parents. Yeah, my parents had told me, and I knew that high school was the same seasons baseball and. Volleyball, and I was like, yeah, I'm going all in. There you go. Yeah. Good. Because we had 
we had Castile had the same issue with Britton Dewitt coming up. Yeah. Who was also a great baseball player, just yeah. a great overall athlete. And he went the volleyball route. Mm-hmm. And everyone he got a ring his freshman year. It was yeah. pretty cool. Um, but I think for him, I don't want to say he looked up to Kyan Steins and said, Well, he chose volleyball and look at ha- like his success and how much he's having fun. Yeah. Um, but I think I think little things like that have something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um Obviously, his brother played. Mm-hmm. Um, so him coming to games, his parents going to the games, like I think that also drove him towards that. But I think it's huge for someone like yourself, who's two-time champ. Um, you, you, like I said, we we you quit the sport you loved to pursue something better. Yeah. Um, and I think for kids coming up in in a where volleyball is now mainly spring uh-huh. and you have to, if you're a lot of kids play baseball growing yeah. up and volleyball you really don't start till you're older where baseball you start when you're five six yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's a lot of kids have to make that transition especially with volleyball coming becoming so big yeah like men's volleyball is crazy to compare to what it used to be and yes i think club has a big thing to do with it mm-hmm. um where beach volleyball for men's isn't like uh growing like the girls is like high school yeah. has women's beach volleyball now um, yeah. but i think just the overall indoor court uh men's volleyball is it's growing rapidly and it's it's cool to see yeah. because we play like we went to vegas uh-huh. um california has great tournaments and we saw that team from california come to brophy who was i think nine in the nation yeah and, modern day. and they had uh they just had some big yeah, like an Ohio State commit, GCU Loyola commit. Loyola Sutter. Was... Yeah. So we beat them. And our, our young <laughs> guys took them out. Our young guys took yeah. them out. Big guys got the rest. Young guys, number nine, who? Took care of them. But, um, so you're in the volleyball world. You started with fear. Well, you started in seventh grade, but then you chose to go through fear. Uh, one, what drove you to fear? Uh, with all the other clubs around, and two, um, what your what's the difference between high school ball? And there's obviously a difference, but just hearing from you, the difference between high school ball and the difference uh, between club ball. Yeah. So, all right. So the first thing, what drove me to fear? So growing up, um, trying out for these teams. Seventh grade year, I tried out, got to know everyone. And then eighth grade year, I was like, these, all these really good kids that I, like, want to be like are at fear. Like, it was Brody at the time, Brock. um, Adam was at Rush, but he came to fear. Yeah, smart. Mm Mm-hmm. Blake could quit soccer. He was at fear. And I was just like, I mean, I'm going to be playing with these guys. And... Castile always had that good volleyball program, right? Even from the young, the youngins, and yeah, so shout out Coach Mine, <laughs> running a great program yeah, over there. Yeah, shout out Coach Mine, and then so, yeah, I had just seen these kids go to fear. I was like, I'm gonna be playing with these kids for the rest of my high school right. years, and so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go build that connection and be familiar with them on the court. Yeah, and so for the second question. The biggest difference is, I mean, for club, you have kids that are, like, paying to be there, like, like they're committed. Right. They want to be there. And I I wouldn't say, like, school, they don't want to be there. But school, you just have a lot of lack of experience because it's a newer sport. Right. And so, like, people will come in and they'll be, like, Trey Jensen, he didn't play club at all. He came in, he he knew he had a talent for it. Right. And he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna go play club and there then from there he advanced. Yeah. So um and all these smaller schools have like kids that don't play club. Right. And so yeah, it's just like the lack of experience and like truly like diving like it's a lot of these kids have played football for the other schools and right. yeah. So that's, I would say that's the biggest difference. Like, so club, like they're volleyball players. Yeah, right. And then school, they're like a mix of maybe volleyball players, football players, basketball right. players. Multi sport athletes yeah. that are just, yeah. it's 
volleyball season. Now I'm going to go play volleyball. Yeah. Where instead of with you guys playing for fear, you're in club in general all around, all year round. Yeah. There's what two se- two separate seasons mm-hmm. after the high school season. Yeah. So it's high school ball, and then you go summer, then fall. Yeah. What is there a difference between that? Would you say? Yeah. So fall is like fall is like we're competing with people all in our state. Fall is like focused on winning region, right. winning the best best title in the state, and so like competing against the aspires, the other clubs momentums and all that and so it's just like fall is more in state like competition and then uh with the occasional travel travel um weekend where you go out and play california teams okay and then um summer is nationals when it really gets serious and you're trying to compete for a national title okay against the california teams the florida teams the ohio teams and that's where you really got to dial it in and focus gotcha. up. Would you say there's a difference in style of play between Arizona, California, Ohio, and Florida? Just the style and how, I don't know, if teams run play. Like, I know there's like there's just fundamental volleyball, and then there's some teams that will just run these different plays. Yeah. And so do you think the region that they're in, there's a difference? how they play the sport for sure so california they're always gonna be crazy they got beaches out there they play they're like i know these guys that we were playing they literally when they weren't out um playing volleyball they were playing spike ball and like just they live they live the sport and the life and so they're obviously going to be a lot more ahead of everyone right florida teams are pretty good i mean same same situation in Ohio. I never really understand. They <laughs> they could compete with anyone, but yeah. it's like what's out there, kind of. Wisconsin's good. Yeah, it's just like some states you wouldn't think of. Gotcha. Yeah. What makes Arizona so good? What makes Arizona so good? I honestly couldn't tell you. I mean, so Aspire 18s this year, Tommy's team. Wow. Yeah. Shout out Tommy Freeze, baller. Crazy. Tommy's team just went crazy this year. They placed third in uh in an open tournament and with all like the top teams in the country and they're just, I know their just tempo was crazy. Right. And when we played Perry, which is mainly Aspire, that was just like the thing that separated everything. Like I know I had a horrible time blocking that. Right. Because it's just everything's just quick, quick, quick. Yeah. And yeah, that 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 really set Aspire apart, and they're just, I would say Arizona's, like, attention to detail, okay. and I feel like we're we're more of, like, a physical team where our ball control is kind of lacking, but we have, we have some big kids that'll get up there and hit the ball. Gotcha. How do you think um, coaching, I mean, obviously, you don't get coached by the Californias and the Floridas. Um, However, you see these California coaches come in. They're just wearing flip flops and yeah. on the like, and this is indoor too. And mm-hmm. then we're not at the beach anymore, and they're just in flip flops. They're kind of like their own vibe that they bring. Yeah. How do you think? I guess that coaching style compared to AZ, where I feel like everyone's, I guess, more volleyball standards. Yeah. Not that California, Florida mm-hmm. isn't. It's just like their own vibe. It's. it's laid back it's chill yeah um how do you think the different i guess coaching the difference in coaching is i think over there it's more like like a pro sport like the players know what they need to do and it's kind of little adjustments coaches are making whereas here i feel like like personally for me i was i would get into like a groove and then i a major problem would come up and i would have to fix my mechanics whereas they're they they've already like they already live this sport so it's right. just like it's kind of like the nfl like the coaches aren't really there to like critique you like this 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 they already know what to do right but yeah they're just kind of going out there and setting out a game plan and like fixing minor adjustments gotcha whereas here i feel like it's more like we need to pay more attention because we don't 
live the sport like they right. do. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, let's go to your high school career. <laughs> okay. Flashback, sophomore year, hair probably 15, 16, 17 inches longer than it is now. Rocking the mullet. I think you brought the mullet back <sighs> for America. Um, sophomore on a varsity team, a great varsity team. Uh, you got Kyler Evans, you got Sean Baggs, um, Cape Luth, Noah Salmonson, Down Hunt. You got these, just these crazy guys that are seniors. Then we we hit the juniors, which was the Sean Baggs, mm -hmm. um, the Keatons, the Noahs, the, and then you get down to your sophomore, you, yeah. Blake, Adam, Tommy, Brock, like Daniel. Um, you get all these guys, but you, Tommy, Adam, um, and right. a little bit of Blake, you guys had a big role in the, like for the team, for the season, for the championship, numero uno. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think of the sophomore coming into that? team where you're one of the younger guys but you also have a big role yeah how do you think that how do you think you felt in that moment and then what do you think you learned from that going forward honestly like kind of like surreal i know when trials were coming up like these were kids i've watched and i was like kind of like mind blown at and their skill and they've been playing for a while and i was just kind of like newer right and i was like um yeah, I was like, how do I kind of step into this role? And so I I would describe my sophomore season as, like, more, like, learning my role and, like, playing on two. I know I didn't have a lot of blocks, but, I mean, like, I also competed with Tommy, too, right. which was a huge humbling experience. Yeah. And I don't know, like, those older kids were just so above my level, and I was just kind of amazed that I could – play with them right and be there i gotcha yeah um so you said you competed with tommy obviously tommy started that season on jv you had that m2 role mm -hmm. hands down no one no one is touching you tommy working hard ends up getting called up now he's m3 we'll yeah. say now you and him are competing with each other and i think it was it was clear you were the defensive guy and he was the offensive guy. Yeah. Um, however, being in that role, wh what do you think? Did it motivate you to, like, at every practice, every game, every opportunity to to become better? To, or were you hungry when he came up? Were you upset when he came up? Like, how was your mental state? Yeah, it was just, I mean, I had seen him, like, working hard on JV. And you know Tommy, he's, he's a workhorse. Yeah. He'll do anything. Yeah. And so I, I like, kind of, like, brushed it off, like, I'm in this role and this is mine, kind of. And once he got pulled up, I was like, shoot, this kid's coming. Right. And he's coming fast. And freaking, like, yeah, I mean, I started that year off with a M2 role, and then it just went to every practice being a battle and us switching with the um, the starters and, like, me playing with the starters and him playing with the starters right. and it was always a battle on who could who could earn the role. Right. And yeah, it was it was intense and that's where I like that's where I get my respect for Tommy because he comes in not not playing middle at all. Me playing middle put play, have playing middle for four years. Right. And just like he just outworked me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Hats off to Tommy for he, – he sees an opportunity and he, he just yeah. gets hungry. Uh, we'll go to the – well, we'll go to state actually first. Um, so state championship game, uh, we're playing an undefeated uh, Sienega, mm -hmm. who is – every paper out there says we're going to yeah. get rolled. Yeah. Um, so you, you guys as sophomores, like we'll stay away from the seniors because I've talked to them already. but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you as a sophomore entering a championship game as a sophomore, how are there nerves? Are like what what's going on through your head as you enter it, and then once the game starts going. So yeah, so 
Um, we had just beat Williamsfield in a reverse sweep. They won the first two sets, and then we won the last three. And just, like, it was, like, probably the most loud, obnoxious yeah. game I've ever been to. And, yeah. like, I didn't play. Tommy played, and he played great. But, like, after that, I was kind of like, yeah, we got this. Right. Like, if we can do this, then we – and we had watched film on them earlier that day. And right. Like, I wasn't too impressed, but – and I just – I just trust that our guys, and our Kylers, our Dallins, Noah's, wow. Tate, fishing yeah. it. <laughs> Shout out Tate. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of just trusted that like it was their time and they would, they would show up and obviously we would play our part, but right, it was their time. Right. So we fast forward to the following year. Uh, we think. We know Gilbert's tough with, yeah. with the Mosers, with the Shoeys. Um, they had a great setter. Uh, their right side was good. But we, in our heads, were like, we, we're going back to back. We're running mm-hmm. in. We, we lost some, some key components, but like you sophomores grew up. We still yeah. got big Sean Very bags much. in the middle. Yep. Um, however, like you mentioned earlier, when you were playing club, Brody, your buddy, who you grew up playing ball with, he had decided to not play anymore. Um, he ended up graduating early and um, is moving on with his life. He started his own business. Shout out Brody for your new business. Duh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, waste, waste rentals. You need a porta potty. Call the Solomonsons. Huh. <laughs> um, but so now we're struggling to find a setter. Yeah. Um, Obviously, uh, hitter setter connection is huge. So I think that takes us a step back from where we thought we were yep. or thought we were going to be. Um, so, how is you as a middle, and then you can even speak for your either your setters that were competing for the spot and your other hitters. How was that such a challenge going into that season? Yeah, so I knew it would be between a couple guys. I mean, Keaton. Josh, was Josh there? Josh was there. Josh was there. And then I can't remember, Parker. Parker. Yeah. And so we went to the O'Connor scrimmage, one of the best teams in the country with a phenomenal opposite. Um, And we just, our connection wasn't there. It was just sloppy. I know everyone on the team was super upset. And Coach Mine even said he was like, we might not get invited back to this thing. Right. Because right. of that crap show we just put on. Yeah. And so, like, and then that was when Tommy once again stepped up. And he was like, I'm going to set. Right. Like, if no one else is going to do it, I am. Right. And he had worked into a 6-2 position. And there again, he's working. He outworked people. Right. And, yeah, eventually we found it with Keaton. I mean, just same with him. He he was a mainly hockey player. Went and watched one of his games. He's crazy Dirty. good. Crazy good. Shout out Keaton. Yeah. Playing for the Canes over in North Carolina. Yeah. Killing it. Gangsta. He's got his his heart, his hustle, his motivation, and just his energy in itself. I yeah. think I think that alone wins him that that center position. Mm-hmm. And I think the skill was there too, but yeah. I think everything else of being a leader is oh, a huge sure. reason why he was there. He was very coachable. Yeah. I mean, like I remember taking other setters, going to like the side court where everyone else was like doing their drills or whatever here. And me as a middle, I'm off half the time. So, and just like taking him and just like per- trying to perfect this right. connection. And he's just super like, Soaks everything in like a sponge, and he's like, "Where else, where do you need that?" And just helpful, right. Very, the guy you want to be around when you're working towards winning the state. Hundred percent. And he just like, yeah. I mean, after and maybe Tommy coming in and saying, "I'm gonna set," maybe push him, right? And because I remember we had a couple conversations at practice where we were like, "Setters, you need to step up," yeah. and like someone. 
Right. Please. We need a guy. And yeah, so Tommy stepped up. Keaton Keaton was like, I gotta I'm I'm gonna be the guy. Yeah. And he was and yeah, very coachable, just huge respect for him. Right. Playing two sports. Like hockey is a very demanding Yeah. And then just to go from volleyball and still like love it as much as he did, love right. the People, great kid. Yeah. I remember he would he would have to get his calves rolled out during yeah. games. Practices, he would either get them rolled out or just take a seat and just take a breather. But, yeah, games, he would be cramping up. And mm-hmm. you got Coach P on the sideline yeah. uh, working his calves out, and he just wanted to play. He, he, mm-hmm. he didn't say, I'm, I'm in pain, I'm, I want to sit. He, yeah. he said, I'm in pain, fix me, I'm going back in. <laughs> yeah. So shout out Keaton. Um, I think I speak for all coaches out there that we would want whatever sport you're playing, baseball nine, basketball five, hockey five, volleyball six. What We'd want all those people to be a Keaton just with his heart, his determination, his his leadership. So um, though he was short, couldn't play, didn't, don't want him as middle, but. He had giant calves. Huge calves. He could Holy fly. He, he played, he could play some right side. He was. Yeah. He did it all. He did it all. Um, so we get home, we get home court. Uh, semis. Yeah, semis. Some stuff happened in the quarters, or no? Some stuff happened before the playoffs, the last game of the season. So now we're two, Gilbert's three, and mm. Gil- where Gilbert was four. So then they did a switch. So now. We got Gilbert. Now we got the big guns coming in. Sunrise lost. Sunrise. And then we had to play. Yeah. And then we had to play Gilbert. In five. That's right. Gosh. We need a. Yeah. Sorry, where are you going? We we just might need. We need officials. (laughs) Yeah, for real. (laughs) For real. Uh, Yeah, so Sunrise went down to uh, Sienega. Gilbert came to us. We lost. 3-0 to Gilbert at their place. We beat Gilbert 3-1 at our place uh, in the season. So we're pretty confident going into that game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Still, it's still Gilbert. There's still Moser outside at 6-9 going to BYU. Shuey's at the middle, 6-7, bounces. He's -hmm. going to Queens, both D1 ballplayers. We're confident going into the game. We, We know we can win. Mm-hmm. What happens in that game? So, I mean, Trent's going to get his kills, Mosier. And, I mean, Reed's just a powerhouse in the right. middle. And I remember going into that game, we knew we were like, shut down Trent, shut down Trent. Because as an outside, he's going to get the most sets, and he's freaking 6'9". Massive, yeah. 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 And so that was our mindset going into that game. And Tommy. Tommy had um, transitioned into a right side role, and so we had Keaton, Tommy at right side, right. Sean and me at middle, Adam, and then who was our outside? Daniel. It, it switched. Yeah. Our our OH two switched. Yeah. Between and then Blake a few Edward. guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Tommy and Sean were doing their thing. They, I mean, Trent's going to get his kills. He had 20 kills, but he got blocked, like, absolutely housed, like, eight times like, by Tommy and Tommy and yeah, Sean. And they, it was just crazy, and that crowd was great, too. Um, but the thing that separated that game was Reed. Yeah. Reed got his. Reed had 10 kills that game on, I'm pretty sure, a 1,000 yeah. swing. Right. He, he didn't miss anything. Right. And that's, that's where it is. Like you're, you, you work so hard and Moser gets 20 kills yeah. yet. We still shut him down. Yes. Right. And hats off to him. He probably averaged 30 kills, if not more uh, a match, yeah. but we shut him down with eight blocks, eight, nine blocks. He still gets 20 kills, but yeah, Shuey steps up at middle, mm-hmm. uh, young Troy Moser, Trent's younger brother steps yep. up. Um, they just played overall great game, and mm-hmm. I I can't say we didn't. We I took them to five. It was a f- five set match, yeah. and 
15, it, 13 it, in the last set. Yeah. It went all the way to, to what volleyball allows you minus extras. But yeah. um, so we lose bags. We lose Keaton. Noah Jay's out. Now it's your turn to be the senior where you had, you were the sophomore looking up to the Kylers, um, the Noah's, the Dallins. Now it's, now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. So does your off season after junior year into senior year, does that change any? Um, and then, or does it just build up when January hits, when February hits and now it's time for school ball? How does, how does your mindset and motivation, uh, like, how does that start to be expressed coming into the season and also be, like, rained down on these younger kids so they know, like, it's it's time? Yeah, so we had always knew from that season coming in last year, we, we always knew we were going to be a favorite, and, like, we kind of always are. And we, we honestly were just, like, thinking, like, we're going to win, like, we had that mindset coming in. I had in club we were on on fear. Tommy had just quit quit football right. and he was all in. Yeah. He was probably one of the top players on our fear team now because okay. you know he's gonna go hard at anything he does. Right. And so I was doing pretty good in club too. So I was like really really like excited about this next year up and coming. Yeah. And so. Club started, we found out Tommy was leaving. Right. And that was, like, crazy. Because Tommy had played for Fear since 15s. He took a year break for football. But, I mean, he, to just switch clubs last year is kind of nuts. Right. And, like, I love Tommy. So, like, I was obviously disappointed. Yeah. And, but we thought, uh, we, we thought our team was going to be really good that year for yeah. club. And so... That happened, and things just didn't, like, we were still good in club. I was kind of catching stride, and then we went to California, and we just weren't competing, really, right. with all these top teams. Like, everyone's so, like, big and good, and I feel like our team was a little undersized. And yeah. Whatever. But now it's school ball time, and Tommy has just improved, like, drastically like takes on the 01 role right just like i think the best player ever but he's like yeah he stepped up majorly yeah adam bouncing left and right blake is in there and then yeah i feel like with our group because our our senior year was like considered really good and so i feel like our guys were like, yeah, it's our turn. Just like right. the seniors were in, what year was that, 2021? Yeah. Yeah, the other year we won state. So we were all like, this is our year. Like, we got the guys, we got the talent. Right. You just got to go out there and execute. Yeah. So Castillo brings in Coach Taylor Stallman. Um, what do you think he brought to the program? And um, do you think – there's a different outcome without him being there, without all his little, just his ridiculous volleyball mm -hmm. uh, IQ. Do you think there's a different outcome? Or do you think we still win? Um, though I will say, without he wasn't there against Perry, and we, it was the only loss we had. Holy crap. Um, so, shout out Taylor. Don't miss any games next season. <laughs> um, but uh, just bringing him in for the program, whether it's for you guys, because uh, you guys have been with him throughout club and stuff, mm -hmm. but do you think it uh, maybe helped the younger guys a lot more For as sure. well? Um, and with him being in there, do you think it kind of brought a little bit of a urgency? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. Um. So yeah, Taylor coming in, he um, he yeah, he really helped us a lot. I remember one of our first practices, I just like been like hitting the net a lot yeah. um, a lot of my balls and I'm supposed to be bouncing it's supposed to be but <laughs> and he much. just tells me he's like he's like see your spacing it's off and I'm like bro and then I just start like right back on track and I'm like 
yeah, we really need this because yeah. he's, um, his mind is pretty great when it comes to volleyball. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and like helping like those other guys, the younger kids, Layton. I know he's always like Layton and Parker and Josh and Hayden, all yeah. of our setters. He helped tremendously. Right. And just IQ and knowing what to do in certain situations of the game. Right. And I think we win the Vegas tournament if he's there. He just, I don't know what happened in those last <laughs> two sets, but. Let's talk about it. Maybe he could have, uh, so we, okay. Vegas so. Vegas tournament, we're coming off a huge wolf howl. Win. Oh, no, let's Only, talk about that Okay, first. let's talk about wolf yes. howl. Wolf howl, 5A entering a wolf pack of a tournament, wordplay. Uh, with all these six A monsters, not not just six A teams, all monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, Castile gets thrown in the is the ACP gym, yeah, the ACP gym again, which is tiny. To uh, the Castile uh, players and and staff, is a slap in the face. Yeah, uh, we feel like we've we've kind of proved ourselves to get to the big court mm-hmm. uh, early on, so. We'll we'll talk about that tournament and let's just skip uh to day two where we finally enter the the big gym. Yeah, so that small gym it was like super tiny. It was just annoying to play with. So we were like kinda pissed that we got put in there. Yeah. And so day t- it was only a two day tournament. Two right? day. Yeah. Yeah. So Saturday we come in. Um oh we play we play um shoot, who is it? Orange team, the big team. Ah, uh, they won state in women's Corona del Sol. Yeah, Corona del Sol to get to the big gym, and that for that game, I'm gonna go back to the little gym just because okay. I had like a kind of transition there. Right. I had just been like not myself. I feel like I wasn't playing as good as I could, and like I don't know, something was just off. I was. I was like disappointed because it's my senior year and and something was just off. And maybe I was being a little lazy or whatever, but I remember I just had something I wasn't happy with the game before that. Yeah. And then coming into Corona, I had like, I was just like, I'm done. I'm done sucking. Right. This is my senior year. This is my one, probably my last year of playing volleyball. I'm like, I'm going all in. And so, yeah, I had a great game, and I was just, like, livid with myself and just, like, yeah. So we won that game. I have a couple blocks. I'm, like, happy with myself, but I'm not going to show it because I'm still pissed that (laughs) I'm not as good as I should be. Right. And so we go in. I mean, we had played – we played four games the first day. Mm. So we were super, like, tired. And so I remember going into the big gym, stretching, just, like, trying to just stay to myself and, like, lock in. And so who... Play Chandler first. Yeah. Oh, Chandler. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Chandler, I'm just... Yeah. We we played a great game. I mean... I think the O'Connor tournament was like a huge, a huge momentum builder for us because like right. we all played phenomenally and like Parker learning how to dish it, like Josh, all of them guys played a role. Right. And like it's just like everything kind of came together and we were all like one. We played as a team. Right. We smacked Chandler. Um, <laughs> sorry, Chandler. Um, and then we. Yeah, and then Perry and O'Connor play, right? Yep. And so, so, so we're waiting on the winner of that. The winner of that, yeah. So the winner of that we play. So oh, no, sorry. Was it the loser of that? Loser, probably. No, it was the winner. It was the winner. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So O'Connor wins. If you don't know about O'Connor, they have this right side that is on U19. His name is Finn. He's super good. I Hawaii mean, like, commit. yeah, Hawaii commit and just like 
Yeah, Troy, great coach. And coach of the year in the United States, I believe, two yeah. years ago. Mm-hmm. And all their 17s kids from Fear, a lot of them played on that team. Right. And they were they are super good. Right. Like top five in the nation and always make it to open. And so those kids, I had known those kids from like being an age older and being right. in the same club as them. Right. I'd seen them play. I've talked to some of the guys and like, yeah, so we knew we knew them. And from, I don't know, like, the first set, we were just, like, we were still playing good, but, like, it wasn't to the level that we knew we could play to. Right. And we dropped the first set. I'm, like, I remember Parker set me on a bad ball, and I just went off on him. (laughs) And Tommy's, like, nah, bro, you can't do that. Like, stay calm. And I was, like. Dude, and I was, yeah, I was in, like, kind of my own world. Yeah. And so, second set comes, and we just hit the ground running. Like, Tommy's doing great. Like, we had so many blocks that game. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, so later that first set, after Parker sent me the worst ball. Shout out, Parker. <laughs> I love that kid. Um, Parker Shout sent me you. a horrible ball, and I was so mad. And then later in that set, I just absolutely unload on one. The hardest hit of my <laughs> life. And I was just, like, so turnt at that time. I, guys, when I tell you, I was like, this is – I've never felt this way before. <laughs> and so – Was that to the right, the 10-footer? Yeah. Right at down in my dude, yeah. middle from my uh, club. And so, yeah, I was like, yeah, let's go. Because in that second set, we just – crush it and kill it and tommy's doing his thing adam's serving aces left and right parker's dishing it and layton holy crap layton didn't let a thing drop i remember um one of my teammates from club smoked a ball by me and i'm like dude are you kidding me because like right that's down in any if any other kids back there yeah but i see i turn back and it's a good 20 feet in the air around, <laughs> like, the 10-foot line. And I'm just, like, Leighton, I freaking love you, yeah. dude. And so, Shout out like, Leighton Bluth. Best, yeah. lib in, best lib in the nation as a junior. He's a dog. We play spike ball with him. He's dude, a he's... dog. He's crazy good. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, like, I don't know what it was, but, like, Josh even came in and played his role, like, right, super yeah. well. Everyone, like, was just Parker was crazy that his defense was crazy that game. Yeah. Tommy's Tommy. Adam was like destroying yeah. it from the service line. And I was I was like, yeah, we're let's go. Yeah. But they didn't have their guy playing, but I mean still they had a super good a solid, one of the top sixteen program. year olds in uh in in the nation yeah. playing as the right side. Yeah. So um yeah. So third set comes around, and we continue to do our thing, and we pull out and just, like, that was the best game I think we've wild. ever played. Yeah. As well, like, that, the atmosphere for just having your own team's energy. Like, it was Oh, it for was sure. Loud. The just bench ours, was crazy. Just with the seven on the, yeah, seven plus staff on the bench was it was loud, and it was, yeah. it felt like the whole gym was, like, shaking. Yeah. But it was just little, our little pack. Mm-hmm. But it was fun. Back in the corner. Then we make it to the championship, play uh, Brophy, which leads up to the Vegas tournament. We end up uh, beating Brophy. Uh, just basically the the O'Connor game kind of just rolled over into the Brophy game, and yeah. we're basically like we, we're here. We know we're, what we can do, and we end up winning the – Wolf Howl, and we're the only 5A team to have won the Wolf Howl. Um, so sh- shout out to Cass Steele. Um, so we go to Vegas. Uh, just being a part of a team, how, how important do you think uh, taking trips? Um, either it could still be in state, but just like we'll say overnight trips. Oh, yeah. How important do you think it is for like team bonding and just to know your guys better? I mean, super like. For my, I know we had a blast up there. Like, yeah. with we drove our our bus was uh 
Josh, Blake, Tommy, Adam, uh, me and Will. And I yeah. just know, like, I don't know about your bus, but we just had a blast. Yeah, he, he will, like, Coach Will had the five seniors. Yeah. I had the other five seniors. Shout out Coach Will. Coach what a Will. Dog. <laughs> um, top Top three drivers. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Maybe the top. We'll, we'll give it to him. Greatest driver <laughs> in the world. Um, yeah, but Vegas, we were just like, it was so fun, dude. Yeah. Like, I know our room, once we had like, once we got there and had our room assignments, it was me, Tommy, Adam, and Blake. And I just like, I just remember laughing like uncontrollably <laughs> in that room and like we had so much fun with those kids and um everyone just like everyone was just like vibing and right. it was super good and we like we started off that tournament kind of bad but yeah it was yeah we're we're driving out it's but, five five hour drive yeah. five and a half so yeah. I mean you still we so we I'll, I'll throw this out that we played so bad in the morning games. Yeah. morning games. Like, if we're ever in a tournament, we, like, have to say, hey, we don't start till 11. Yeah, just not Going in the for... morning games. We are not in those. <laughs> we are uh, not a morning team. So, uh, but we'll go. The tournament itself was, was fun. Uh, however, then we meet up with Bro- Brophy uh, in the semis. Uh, so, <laughs> what happens in that game? Because I, I don't want to say the score, but I think we... I think the first set Holy was crap. 25 Just to 12. Murder. And then, murder <laughs> than the first set. Then the next two, I'll let you tell the world what happened. The okay. world. Ky- <sighs> P.S. Kyan said this would be the most watched podcast surpassing Joe Rogan's. Oh, yeah. For to, sure. to date. For sure. So he said once this, once this launches yeah. tomorrow. Uh-huh. It will be. I'll tag Joe Rogan. After the story. I'm Hashtag Joe Rogan. Rogan. Hashtag Joe Rogan. <laughs> Hashtag Joe um, Rogan. Yeah, but so, Brophy had a couple guys missing, like, I swear they had a couple guys Pat- missing all season. Patrick was there, and oh, he, it was I Teddy, my boy Teddy. Teddy, Teddy my Teddy. boy Teddy from club. He is a dog. Teddy Churchill, he kills it. Um, uh, Yeah, he's a dog. And so he was hurt or something. So they had a... his wrist. Yeah. I don't know. They had a couple new kids. And so we just obliterate them the first set. It's like 25. Like I think you said, it was 12. 12. I thought it was 15, but I don't know. Man, we must not Doesn't give them too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> Smacked them. And then so the next set just comes in and just... I don't know what happens. Like our setters kind of like fumble a little bit and it's just like i mean i everyone played that it was, yeah it's a poor poorly executed yeah set all We're around just missing like maybe the chipotle kicked in mm, w chipotle shout out chipotle <laughs> shout out, Spons- shout out, shout out my boy here shout out boosters for Spons- supplying oh, the chipotle. shout out, boosters shout out wilt for scanning his, <laughs> his code at the end <laughs> Getting a bunch of points. Stealing for all the points. He's still eating for free. Ugh. Jeez. Um, yeah, but we just didn't play good, and they took advantage of that, and they they beat us like twenty five, twenty two, or yeah. something. They, they beat us handsomely. I oh no, it was like twenty five, eighteen. It was it was yeah, oh. it, like that whole set. You we knew we were losing. Yeah, I mean, it was just poor play. I don't know what happened, honestly, but we go into the third set. Oh, by the way, Vegas screwed us over. We weren't shout supposed out, to sh- not no shout out Vegas. Yeah, we were we weren't supposed to play Brophy in the semis. We were supposed to play them. We were three. Brophy was one. They then. didn't want two Arizona teams in the finals. Fact. That's a fact. Brophy came. So, in, Brophy came into the day at number one seed. We were number three. Uh, and then we find out Brophy is now number two, and we are number three. And the uh, one seed and the four seed were both Vegas teams because the year prior, I believe, they had two Arizona teams in the championship, and they didn't want that again. Oh, boo-hoo. Vegas rigging things again. Yeah. It's just a Vegas thing. Come on, Vegas. Shut up, Vegas. <laughs> what happened to Vegas stays <laughs> in Vegas. Nope. 
<laughs> now it's on the number one podcast. Oh. Uh, um. Yeah, yeah but Arizona, maybe. we lost that game and we were just like, fuck the break, dude. Yeah, like, tough. Yeah. Tough L. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, Tommy was just broken. His arm almost fell off. Yeah, well, yeah, Tommy had, I think, 157 swings <laughs> at that tournament. If not more. Just feed him. Feed him. Yeah. Feed him the ball. How are we going to score? Give the ball to Tommy. Yeah. Well, he's going to lose it. Die. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Vegas is over. We're back. We're back into the season. We're just, we're rolling. Uh, hit, huge hiccup with Perry. We're so excited to see Perry at home. Mm-hmm. Coach Taylor leaves us for his own ben shenanigans, U. a.k.a. Ben U. AKA. Not shenanigans are one of the top NAI yeah. programs in the so, country. Back to back trips to the championship. No big deal. He's on our coaching staff. <laughs> <laughs> I got to show him this one. He was chasing one of these. <laughs> Hashtag ring chaser. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Coach Dahlman. Yeah. Uh, what were you saying? So we lose to Perry, which yeah. I think... Holy crap. I had told everyone that this was the game to go to. We were ranked third in the third, state. Well, third in the state, but we at that time, I think we were... No, this was before. We got up to, I want to say, 12th in the country last year. 12th in the country. And then that's, yeah. and so that's what was going on in Vegas, because Brophy was ranked 19th. And Tommy kept yelling 12 across the net. 12. Mm, yeah. And then they hopped us after that. So thanks, Tommy. Shout out, Tommy. <laughs> Good luck on your mission. Shout out, Tommy. <laughs> but so besides the hiccup with Perry, we're, we're rolling. Uh, come playoffs, we got Williamsfield. Flashback to two years ago, Williamsfield, where we, we don't think we have a problem with them. They come into our house. They're up 2-0. We end up having to reverse sweep them to win. This season, they come in for the quarterfinals. We're up 2-0. We're like, breeze. It's whatever. They almost come back and reverse sweep us. So we, uh, we're going into a fifth set at home in the quarters. Never mind semis. And we're on the brink of elimination. What's going through everyone's head? I mean, it's just like... like... What was it? Do you remember the sets one? It was 2-0, and then, it was, then they won the next two. They won yeah, we were just like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, we know we're better than this team, and it's just like frustrating. Because like, I feel like everyone was trying. It's just like, what are we doing? Right. Like, for real. And so, like, I mean, like, later in, or like, William Field always sucks to play. Like, their fans, like, are always loud. They there's a lot of trash talk usually that those yeah. games and yeah they they have a, gr- a good they have a good fan base that travels with them. Yeah. So well, when they come to our place, it, it's always packed. Yeah. Yeah. Very. And so yeah, we lost those two sets and we're like just like, all right, let's just go take care of this. Like, right. We we know we know what we got and we know, like we trust we trust each other and we beat them. Yeah. But shouldn't have been like that right. at all. Um, we skip ahead to the next game. We got ALA, who is a 4A program. It, they're a 4A program. However, they're playing in the, in the 5A tournament. Mm-hmm. How that works is beyond me. I don't do any of that stuff. Uh, however, they're coached uh, by a great coach in Tim. And he brings them in, and they're ready. And we – I want to say – we knew they were well coached, but we were like, they're a 4A team. Mm-hmm. They've only seen 4A. Mm-hmm. Um, they come in and they dump us at one. Yeah. Probably 25 17. Brought, uh, brought a huge, huge student session. Huge, huge crowd, loud crowd. Yeah. Um, and we lose the first set. I want to say we come back, we win. The, I think it went back and forth until the fifth. I watched that game recently. Really? Yeah, I rewatched it. Because I we, thought our we, outsides hit into the block a lot, and I was like, we actually didn't. Like, I don't, can't remember what exactly it was. I feel like it was just stupid stuff. Yeah. But it. But they were definitely a tough team. I. It might not have even been anything. They were just 
we they came in and did better than we expected right. and battled better than we expected. And Tommy had known some of the kids from his club team. And so we knew who they had and stuff. And, yeah, they just came out and did a really well job of uh, putting us away yeah. the first set. Right. And then did they win the second set? No. No, I think it was – I think it went back and yeah, forth. Yeah. I think it went one, 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 and then mm-hmm. the fifth set came. And – both teams, if you look throughout the season, we didn't really go to five sets. So, however, we had a lot of tournaments. I know they went to tournaments too. Um, they actually won the Higley tournament, mm-hmm. and so there's just two two solid programs going head to head. Fifth set, we got home adva- home court advantage, um, knowing very well the season before we lost in the fifth set at home on the verge of a championship. So this fifth set, we need to win the championship. We go out and we, and we do it. Mm-hmm. We had caught a lot of momentum in that fourth set. Yeah. Month. And yeah, so we just, like there was like close all throughout that game, every set. But the fourth set, I really felt like we had got, we had gotten back to us and, like, we had caught a m- bunch of momentum. I know to win that fourth set, we had the craziest play ever. Right. I mean. Not as crazy as the Kyler Shoe play. I don't remember that one. Williams Field. I don't remember that one. Or no, was it Williams Field or is it? it was I remember. Gilbert. It. What was it again? He, it, oh, it, yeah. The block yeah, and he yeah, popped it yeah. up off his foot. I think yeah. it was Williams Field. It was Gilbert. It was Gilbert. Gilbert at home. Oh, that's right. It was good. It was just regular season game, yeah. but it was wild. Mm-hmm. Shout out Kyler. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Kyler's foot. Dang. Um, yeah, but so I'll explain the whole play. Uh, this is to win the fifth, the fourth the set, fourth. and it is twenty three, twenty two. Yes, maybe something like that. It's super close. No, it's twenty four, twenty three, and. They just hit, um, I think we had received, and we, like, did something, whatever. Had, like, a roll shot over. They got it to one of their guys, and he just, um, he swings back row into the six. Yeah. And Tommy just lays out, makes a play. It goes straight into Brody. Like, I'm talking, like, fast. Yeah. And, uh, like, shout out Brody for his reaction time. Sophomore Brody. Pops it up and just, we get it, we get it back over or something. Yeah. And then Camden gets a kill later. And I, I remember, like, watching that back and I was like, holy crap. Like, that, like, that was sick. Yeah. It was sick. Yeah. And it was the end it's, of the set. Yeah. Our student section goes crazy. We're all like, Let's go. I see, I uh, watch the video. I see Tommy like smiling and then jump up and do the Jordan punch. Heck and, yeah. Yeah. Adam was freaking psyched out of his mind. And who's in the oh, comments here? We're about to get kicked off in a minute and 30 seconds. Ain't no way. Yeah. Bet. Oh, shoot. My fault. I'm no, we'll keep it going. Long. No, we'll um, keep going. Play this. Play the next one. We'll keep going. Uh,. Where was I? Oh yeah, Tommy we, Jordan. We made, yeah, we Air made Tommy. Yeah, Jordan. like I mean, semis. We beat them fifteen, right, and then the, going into the fifth set, we picked up all this momentum and we just put them away. Like I remember, um, yeah, we just played really well. Everyone had their head up. It was encouraging. I was, that game was great. Everyone played great. Yep. Bench players yeah. stepped up. And ju- even just the the atmosphere of the bench. Mm-hmm. But there's some there's some games where they're very down and out. But then when there's a show going on in the court, they're they're hyped, they're excited, they're like, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Let's see here, thirty seconds. It's hard being a big program with a, a huge team mm-hmm. and getting everyone playing time. Yeah, especially in volleyball where it's a six man game. And those kids would have started at any other school. Exactly, exactly. Every, every single player that that makes a team at Castile could start anywhere. Yeah, 
and that's that's the hardest part and it's hard telling them it's hard telling their parents mm -hmm. when when asked why is my kid on the bench it's yeah. there's so many good kids here so many athletic kids so many good kids at just the game of volleyball that mm -hmm. go to castile uh but it's with the program coach mine takes them from seventh grade all the way till they graduate um where he doesn't necessarily coach them he knows who they are um at the level he helps pick the teams um and then once they get hit high school he's there he's yeah. always there he's he's one of the best coaches i've ever uh got the opportunity to be around and he's it shows mm -hmm. there's, these are his these are his they're also his because he, he's been on the team twice um fun fact we have one kid going into next year who also has two of these and he's still going to school camden varney malachi baker not camden nope malachi 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 is a dog dude yeah this okay so like because he he's been on the team since a freshman oh shoot yeah, yeah that's he's right a, he's one of the only freshmen to make yeah team. malachi is a stud dude I mean, he was one of the players that was, like, super, super good his young years. Right. Like, crazy good. Everyone was super impressed. And, like, this, um, in tw the 2022 season, he had played, like, a huge role player. Right. Like, he came in, Gilbert, and did so well. He, like, got the crowd going and everything. Just phenomenal guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Shout out Malachi. Keep balling. Senior year is going to be huge for him. Um, but also, with the first guest you had, I'm going to do another shout out real quick to Camden Barney, who is just ridiculous. Had the craziest hairstyle for the championship game. Uh, Mr. Pony. And he, he just he stepped it up. So he's oh, always just been a massively. baller, but he just, he's like, Oh, I'm just gonna I'll just be a right side and I'll just go crazy. And he went I mean, given that we have two great outsides in Adam and Tommy, he was kind of forced in that role that he wasn't familiar with and he just stepped it, into it, it so off. well. Yeah. He did like we brought back the D ball. Uh -huh. We didn't have a D ball. Yeah, and, Parker was I remember in the freaking semis, Parker was uh dishing it back to him. And Camden is a fifth set demon. He is unstoppable in the fifth. If you get us in the fifth and Camden's on the court, it's over. Shout out to Camden. What was it? Nine, it was 9 or 10 to 14 against Higley. Yeah. His yes. sophomore year. His sophomore year. Fifth set. Serves us. Serving up until we won. Six straight. Shout out Camden. Camden's a dog. Shout out Camden. <laughs> All right. Well, we're at, well, so obviously we win, we win state. These are the one, the only Kyan's Steins, Kyan James Steins rings. Probably don't fit his fingers anymore because he's bulked up. Uh, we win state. You get talked to by a famous college coach to come play for his program. And we have other decisions in life uh, after high school. And you had to make that decision. So let's hear what your decision is. Okay. So, I mean, um, so we win state. Coach Taylor invites me out for a visit. I don't know if that's unofficial. Unofficial. He, yeah, unofficial. He just talked to me. He's like, hey, you should come. Like, you should come check it out, yeah. see what's going on. And I I knew um, Blake and Adam were interested. And Blake kind of held back a little. But I knew Adam was, for sure was going there. Yeah. And it's a phenomenal program. And so... Um, two of two of Benue's middles were leaving. One was transferring to BYU. Shout out Tyler Watts. And yeah, and so I was like, I was just kind of like, I don't know. I kind of like accepted like that this was my last time playing in high school. And then going into club, I had summer. I didn't really play a lot because yeah. this other middle at Brophy was like with Patrick, my setter. Right. And he was just developed a great connection with him. And I never really was able to recover from that. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then I found out that Blake committed. I was super happy for him. 
Shout out Blake and Adam. They're out balling right now. Um, sharing uh, sharing an apartment. And, oh, true. Mm -hmm. And so one of the Aspire kids committed there too, Jackson Walsh. Okay. Super, super good middle. Um, yeah, and I just – I knew he was going there, and I knew he was better than me. Let's just put it like that. He was better. And so, like, uh, yeah, I was – I didn't I didn't have the summer I wanted to and had I maybe I would have considered it. Right. And I just didn't and I was kind of ready to move on to a different part of my life. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you you retired a champion. Yeah. A two-time champion. Um you made the best of your time uh with the sport. I'm sure you'll still be around it. Yeah, for sure. Um but Everyone has a decision to make. Um, big example is Justin Babcock. Yeah. He, Holy he, crap. He had a decision to make uh, after after high school, and uh, unfortunately, COVID ended his uh, volleyball career. But uh, his decision was to no longer play volleyball as well. Phenomenal. Also, a phenomenal middle. Um. So yeah, life happens, and you got to move on from from things you love. And um, but you went out a two time champion. You went out as Castile's uh, leader in blocks, uh, surpassing Sean Bags, who's a D1 commit to Lewis. Shout out Sean Bags. Um, so, wh what do you, what do you what do you see yourself doing uh, with school, and where do you see yourself? What's what's the next steps for Kyan? All right, so I'll, I'll obviously be at a lot of the games. I'm going to the games with one of my. I'm going to the women's games with one of my friends uh, this Thursday. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll still be out around the game. Um, I'll still be playing sand. I play spike ball. But as far as, like, career-wise, I'm not really sure. I'm in, I'm in business right now, and I was thinking about accounting, but I okay. feel like I want to take a more unorthodox path. Like, gotcha. Maybe drop out of college. Mom, don't listen to this. But yeah. Mark's mad. Yeah. No, I don't know your mom's name, otherwise I would have said it. <laughs> but Mrs. Stein sounds fine. <sighs> um, well, everyone everyone has their own path and as long as you're if you're passionate with what you're doing. Oh, oh and I don't I don't know if I can say this, but we can cut it out if I can. Whisper it. Should I? Yeah, it'll still catch up. I, I was just, I was just gonna talk about maybe one of my other opportunities. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, so um, summer, me and Parker bond super well because we spend a lot of time on the bench. And so <laughs> Parker's my boy, Parker's a dog. And so I find out he commits to SVU where Kyler is going right now. Shut out. And they're they're super good D three program. Yes. They compete for a national title every year. Every year. year. Southern Virginia. And so Shout out. I'm at the gym one day and I get a Snapchat from Kyler. And he's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And I'm catching up, you know. And then he talks to me about, like, how some of the SVU, or he was, like, a middle now for SVU. Right. And, like, um, they were, like, short a couple guys. And he was like, I know some of the SVU guys had their eye on you. And I was like, I didn't know that right. at all. I was like, I didn't know, like, anyone, like, wanted me for school because I didn't put my name out there right. really with any film or anything. And so I was just kind of like super surprised and like it was like kind of a proud moment because yeah. like someone maybe would have wanted me to go to that school. Right. And so, yeah, but I was like, yeah, um, like, thank you. This is great to hear, but I've, kind of accepted that I'm leaving the game. Yeah. And won't be playing organized anymore. Right. Oh. Well, it it's cool it's cool to hear stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean once you have I feel like once you have your mindset it's kinda of hard to go back. And, yeah. But a uh, heck of a heck of a career. Uh two time champ, Castile uh block leader. Um real quick shout out to Coach Chandler, what he's doing with the girls program at uh Castile. Uh, they're killing it this year. Hop out to a game. Good luck the rest of the season and in the playoffs. 
And then one last thing before you leave, I want you to say some words uh, to Hayden Hurley, who's going to be leading the pack next year for Casil. Yeah, I know a couple guys. I talked to Carter um, Bentley. He doesn't know what role he's going to be stepping into, but I know they're all super hyped. And I know Hayden, he's just – I feel like it's always been a confidence thing for you. Like, you got the skill. You got the talent. You just need to step into that role and realize that you're going to lead this team. You're going to lead this team to – Wherever they go this next year, hopefully stay. Hopefully, hopefully three. Yeah, three add, of them. Add to the collection. Three of them. But, yeah, Hayden, phenomenal setter. He was competing our 2023 year last year. But, I mean, Parker just kind of stepped into the role. Yeah. And it was a competition. I mean, we didn't know who our, like, top setter was going into playoffs. Right. People don't yeah, understand it's always, that. Always a competitive practice. Yeah. And each and every game, we're, we're just deciding who was going to be that guy. Yeah. So Parker, yeah, Parker, Parker ends up stepping up, up and up. another ring comes on the finger. Mm -hmm. so. Shout out, Parker. Shout out. <sighs> well, I'm going to end it here. Uh, my name is Tyler Milbert. I'm here with Mr. Castile, block leader, Kyan Steins, two times champ. Shout out to his mom and dad. Uh, this is Inside the Mind of an Athlete.